Welcome everybody to a quick beginner's guide video for Slay the Spire. We're going to be looking at the silent in this video, talking about some of the basic cards, strategies, and relics to keep an eye out for with this character. Now, please keep in mind before we start this video, this is my uh, play or my version right now is an early access beta build. So the cards and values that you see may not completely be accurate to what the version you're playing at, but the foundation and general strategies should remain consistent. So, the previous video we did was on the Ironclad over here. And while his strategy is about using overwhelming strength boosts and just cards, fewer cards that do more damage, the Silent is a lot more trickier to play. She can be built around longer play using poison and exhaust, or very bursty damage. And unlike the Ironclad, she can easily boost her defense to make it easier for her to survive. But let's take a look at a few of her cards, and we'll go through her strategies as well. So, one of her starting cards, Neutralize over here, is a very decent one to start weakening enemies and plays more into her strategy of boosting her defense while ma making the enemies weaker. She also starts with the Survivor card here that goes into a discard based strategy, wherein you'll use cards like Survivor, uh, Dagger Throw down here, and other cards to get rid of cards in your hand and thereby boosting or synergizing with other relics and advantages. We'll see a few of those in a few minutes. Backflip is a good basic card if you want to get block and card draw. Bane here is a must if you're going to go for a heavy poison base build. Poison goes through enemy armor and will tick damage off and for each turn. So if an enemy has 7 points of damage, they'll take 7 points one turn, then they'll take 6 points the next, 5, 4, and so on. Get it high enough and it can wreck even the strongest of bosses. Now the other unique system of the silent here are shivs. Shivs as you can see are zero cost cards which also exhaust, which also plays really well into a exhaust based uh, build with a certain relic which we'll talk about later. But shivs allow the silent to do a lot of burst damage. They play well into the shuriken and kunai strategy with those relics, and there are a few other ones as well. But if you also want to go for shivs, cloak and dagger upgrade works well to basically give you block and then free damage on top of that. Dagger spray is the silence AOE based strategy, and can be useful if you need to hit the entire group. Deadly Poison is an alternative, or is one of the ways of putting poison on an enemy, and when upgraded, as you can see right here, can get it going pretty well. Dagger Throw again, a good way of uh, doing card draw, damage, as well as discarding. Flying Knee is a good setup card for if you want to gain that energy. I've seen some people make use of Piercing Whale as a way of reducing an enemy's damage for one turn, but you need to have, there, a lot of things need to go right for this card to work. You need to play it on a turn where the enemies are doing some of their most damaging attacks, and you gotta hope that you get it at that same time. If you're looking for the mix between uh, poison and direct damage, poison stab is good. Typically, I find that I will either use poison stab or deadly poison, but not both. Prepared is a very solid uh, basic card. It basically is a zero cost card that gets you more cards in the process. It's also really handy if you do draw status or curse cards that can mess with you. And if you're looking for again more card draw and damage, Quick Slash is a very effective one. Slice by itself is not all that useful, at least for most decks. But there are, there's one relic that can make this very powerful. And if you are going to go for a discard based strategy, then Sneaky Strike works really well, as it gains you energy if you've already discarded. 
Sucker Punch is a card that I like. It's basically the higher damage version of Neutralize. Even though it does cost 1 energy, it can do some really good damage and keep stacking weak in order to keep the enemy from being able to do anything. And Accuracy is a must if you're going for a Shiv base build. It just, again, it's just free damage on top of zero cost cards. All Attack is an upgrade AoE. Again, if you're going to be basing yourself on a discard based strategy, it is perfect for you along those lines. Now we're getting down to some of the more interesting cards for the Silent. Backstab is basically free 11 points of damage right at the start of a battle, and then it goes away. If I can get copies of this, I like to draw them for basically an alpha strike of hitting immense damage on turn 1, and then they don't clog up your deck. Blur, if you're going for a block based strategy, and there is a card, if I can if I remember how to click on things, Footwork that enhances your dexterity which improves block value. You combine that with Blur and it allows you to keep your block. It's very similar to the uh, Barricade or Blockade card. I don't remember off the top of my head right now for the Ironclad. Bouncing Flask is kind of risky at being too costs, but it can be used to get through enemy artifacts which will nullify status or status affecting cards as long as it's available. And when it's upgraded, this is a way of basically applying 12 poison to an enemy, or to a group of enemies. Discard based hands, or even just for having as an emergency, Calculated Gamble works, and this is a card you must upgrade, as it allows you to keep it and play it again and again. And what this is used for is basically my hand is bad, it doesn't work for this specific situation, let me play this card and we'll see if we get lucky. If you're going for a high block, Caltrops is another given. If you can draw or get two or three of these power cards, this basically allows you to combine a high defense or weakening the enemy to let them hurt themselves instead of you needing to have a lot of damage. But, if you're going for a poison based build, there are two cards that are above all else that you need. The first is Catalyst. When upgraded, this will triple the enemy's poison. Doesn't sound all that impressive, but remember, each turn the enemy is going to be taking poison damage. If you hit them enough to get up to like 15 or 20, that can equal a lot of poison. 60 points of damage on an enemy will wipe out just about everything outside of bosses fast. The other card you want to get, which is a, a legendary or a epic, is going to be Corpse Explosion. And we'll look at a few more of those other cards later. What this does is basically turn one enemy into a poison bomb. When he dies, all damage of his max or its max HP will go to everything else. There is an Act 3 boss that's a, a two enemies in one or two enemies at a time battle. This card completely counters that fight. It's that powerful. And even if you don't go for a poison based build, simply being able to kill one enemy and letting it kill the other group of enemies is an effective counter in of itself. But we come back up here. Choke is very useful if you're going for a low cost strategy, again using shivs. As you play choke and then you just let it loose with shivs to do more damage. There's also an effective way to kill one enemy while focusing your shivs on another one. Concentrate useful in its own situation. Again, if you're going to build yourself on a discard strategy, this can certainly help, but I don't normally take it if, if it's just available. Same goes for Crippling Cloud. I find Poison and Weak for two costs, and it being an exhaust being a little too much. But if you're again going for a high energy build or may use a Poison, it can help, but there are cheaper alternatives. Dash is an interesting card. It's basically two costs, 
lets you block and do damage at the same time. If you combine this with Dexterity or Caltrops based strategies, this can certainly be a useful one for you. Distraction, basically a free skill. Nothing more we can really say about that. Endless Agony. Basically, you draw a card, it creates a copy. As long as you don't play that copy, when it comes up again, it will do another one, and another one. Very useful for zero cost based strategies, again choke can be useful with it, but it doesn't really do too much of anything else. Escape Plan, another all around great card. It's free card draw, with if it draws a skill, gets you block on top of it. I can't think of a situation where this card would be bad to have in your deck. Eviserate, uh, again, very specific use. But if you're building yourself around a discard strategy, this can be an effective finisher for that. Expertise, again, useful if you don't have a lot of card draw to begin with, but I normally don't take this one unless I have other cards I can make use of with it. Finisher, for a shiv or zero cost based strategies, this can be an effective, well, as the name implies, finisher. Flechette is basically, again, if you're going for a heavy block, aka skill-based strategy, Flechette can work for you. So that means you're going to be basing yourself around a lot of defense or skill-based cards like these. Like our friend uh, Dash, not, not Dash, what was it, uh, Leap? Or oh, I'm sorry, Blur, and so on. But again, you have to commit all in for it to really work. We've already talked about footwork. Heel hook is effective if you're going to be making use of cards like Sucker Punch and other weakened base strategies. Infinite Blades, one of my favorites for the Shiv base strategy. Basically, it gives you a free Shiv each turn. Have two or three of these in your hand or in your deck, and you're basically getting three zero cost cards for free. And this can lead to some very effective ramping. Leg Sweep, again, if you're going for Weaken and Block, or Weaken and Block, very useful. Again, it will synergize well with Flechette over here. Masterful Step has been reworked several times during the early access of Slay the Spire. This version I do like. Again, it's basically free damage, but if you keep taking hits, it will basically render itself useless or just not uh, valuable enough to play. Noxious Fumes. A effective or a cheap way of getting poison on your enemies. It is the slowest way to build it up, but this is a perfect counter to artifact based builds. And again, if you're synergizing with other poison strategies, can be useful. Predator. This is a card I've seen some people use. It's not one that I particularly like, because again, I usually don't have to worry about card draw with the silent due to how the, her other cards work. But, the high damage does make it valuable, and it could synergize well with, let me pull it back up here, with Flying Knee to get that additional energy. But coming back down here, Reflex, I don't typically use this card again. If you're going for a discard based strategy, this and Tactician will work for you, otherwise they're useless. Reel with Holes, one of your higher damaging cards. Again, I don't normally use this one because I like to go for Shiv or lower cost strategies, but this one could be of some use. Setup, and this is where it comes into use. Setup basically lets you take a card, put it back on your draw pile, it costs zero for the next one. Very useful for any deck that makes use of two or higher energy cost cards. Doesn't work with Skewer, sadly. Skewer, I don't like, I typically don't like to use X cost cards all that much, but if you are going to go for it, this is your damage killer or your damage dealer. Terror is one of my favorite cards. It's basically a way of guaranteeing an enemy's going to be taking extra damage. If you can render or remove the artifacts off of an enemy or boss, this is a way of boosting your damage without needing strength based cards or relics. Well laid plants. 
a great card that works in just about every deck. It's zero cost, so it's not going to get, take anything from you from that turn. It basically lets you keep one card for the next. This is perfect for stuff such as our Wailing. Uh, where is it? A Piercing Whale. To keep it in your hand for when you absolutely need it. And when you bump it up to its two card hold, can be very handy for that. And again, it gives you no negative downside for using it. Now we come to the epic level of cards. And the Silent has some interesting ones. A Thousand Cuts basically gives you extra one to two points of damage depending on when you play it or if it's upgraded for every card you play. If you're going for Shiv or Zero Cost card strategies, this can wreck groups of enemies very quickly. Adrenaline, it's basically if there's no other cards you desperately need and it comes up, this is just a perfect card. It's free energy, it's free card draw, you can't really do better than that. After Image, again, not that important if you're already going for a high defense build to begin with, but zero cost cards after image can become very handy to get free block. The free block here, I it does not synergize with Dexterity, unfortunately. Alchemize, free potion. Basically, that's it. Give you know enough said. Bullet time, can't draw but reduces your entire hand to zero. Can be very handy, and it works better again if you have two or higher cost cards in your hand to begin with. But if you're going for a card draw based strategy, this card will counter it, obviously. With that said, we already talked about Corpse Explosion, Burst. If you have the right skills in your hand, probably one of the best ones is Catalyst. If you're going for poison based strategies, then Burst can be incredibly powerful. It's similar in some sense to the, I think it's called Mirror Form, for the defect, which we may talk about in a later video, but when this card works for your deck, it is going to be dynamite for it. Die, die, die? <laughs> card that's fun to say. Basically, again, it's the super AoE hit everyone card. Not that bad, and it does a decent amount of damage for one cost. Doppelganger, again, it's an X or X energy cost card. I don't really use it, but it could be of handy for you. In Venom, this is the way of getting poison without needing to commit heavily to a poison based build. While it can nullify artifacts such as the other cards, the fact that, they, that you must do damage directly does make it less useful compared to the other poison ones. If you're going all in for poison and get the corresponding relics, which we'll talk about next, this can work, but the other cards can be more valuable. Although this could become dynamite with shifts. Glass Knife starts out at 16 or 24 damage, goes down 2 per turn. If you're not going for a lengthy battle, Glass Knife can work, but that 2 point reduction will start to add up. Grand Finale, the card that it sounds very amazing, but I have never in all my plays of the Silent had this condition come up when this card would work. So you need to build your deck very, very carefully, but I just found it to be too specific for me. Malaise, very handy for weakening an enemy, probably the one ex uh, X cost card that I may take. Again, play it right, and it can make a battle a lot easier. Nightmare. Again, if you're, it's kind of like a different version of Burst. Can be of use, but again, you must play your, you must have the hand to work with it. Now, speaking of a card that can really hand come in handy, Phantasmal Killer, for. This is where the Silence Burst base damage, or why this build works for her. Get this going with a lot of shivs and along with accuracy, 
and you will wreak havoc on the enemies. And it's basically the way of doing damage without needing to rely on strength that the Ironclad does. Storm of Steel. Very interesting card. It really comes in handy, again, if you're going all in for shifts. But even then, it can be very risky to play if you're discarding other cards that you may need. But again, a discard-based build would be Dynamite. Tools of the Trade. Another way of getting card draw and discard at the same time. Not as all-purpose as Tools of the Trade or Well-Laid Plans, but it can be of use. Unload. Again, this card base, yes, but I usually find that there are other cards I would like to take other than unload when it pops up. Wraith form. This is a very powerful one if you're going for a YOLO, we need to kill this enemy fast strategy. Intangible basically means that every enemy's attack, no matter what, will take one point of damage from you. So if that attack was about to do 65, it now becomes 1. And yes, that is very powerful when played right. The downside is that you're losing dexterity, which renders your blocks worthless. So if you don't kill the enemy fast, you will not be able to catch up in that regard. But, with that said, we've looked at all the cards, so we're going to turn to some relics, and maybe we'll look at some colorless cards as well. Colorless cards are more specific in their use, but they can supplement a deck very well. Apparition comes from a specific event. We won't spend too much on the uh, colorless cards because they're a lot harder to plan around, but Bandage Up is really great as it's a way of the Silent to heal, which she does not have otherwise. Pankia, Pankia, always good. A lot of these cards are event based, which is why we're not going to cover them in this video. And the colorless cards are more for advanced strategies and not so much a beginner's guide. But with that said, we got relics to look at. And for those of you who are new, relics are either class specific or can drop from their pool. And the Silent has some very game-breakingly potential strategies if she gets the right relics. So some good old standbys, Anchor for a free block, Blood Vial for free healing, Bronze Scales if you're going for a thro thro wow, Thorn or damage based strategy, Preserve Insect good for anyone basically going after epic encounters or elite encounters, I'm sorry about that. But, she has some really great ones in the Uncommon and Up pool. So, Kunai and Shuriken. If you're going for a zero-cost build or zero-cost strategy, these two are golden for you. Uh, Mummify Hand, if you're going for powers, it's a great one as well. Mercury Hourglass, great for everybody. Ninja Scroll. Again, if you're going for a shiv-based strategy, this gives you three to begin with for free. Combine with these two, and you're going to get game-breakingly powerful fast. Orm ornamental Fan, very useful as well. Since the Silent is really good at weakening enemies, Paper Crane, if it pops up, can be of some use for you. Then we have, again, some of these other ones. If we go down to the Rare build, this is Dead Branch. If you're going for an exhaust based build, this is the relic to get. And typically, you're going to get the Dead Branch and then decide to go for an exhaust based build because it just ties everything together. Fossilized Helix is a good all around one for everybody. If you want more strength, Gir Giria works for you as well. Ice Cream is another good old standby as well. You can use uh, Nunchaku here if you're, again, going for a zero-cost strategies. Unceasing Top basically just lets you keep drawing and drawing and drawing. Works for everybody. This card, Tingsha here, is basically free damage. If you're going for a high discard strategy, this one will work for you. The Specimen. 
This is a great one, again, if you're going for poison-based builds. Combine this with Corpse Explosion, and you can basically just wipe out an entire group very fast. Now, there's another poison-based one that I'm trying to scan right now. I don't think we... Ah, here it is. Sneko Skull. Basically, apply poison, you get another point of poison. Completely worthless if you're not going for a poison based strategy. Dynamite if you're going to make use of stuff such as the ticking one that we looked at, which I'll go back to very fast. It was. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There it is. Noxious Fumes. Noxious Fumes combined with the Sneko Skull, and you can really start to see it tick up. But moving down to boss class. The upgrade of the Ring of the Serpent or Ring of the Snake that you start with, again, really handy for card draw, and just works like that. There's nothing more we can really say about it. But, a card or a relic that I absolutely positively love is the Wrist Blade. It's only found as a boss relic, but it basically turns all the zero-cost cards, making them do more damage. Again, the power that this card can have with shivs is immense. And when you tie it together with shuriken and kunai, and you're going to have a really great strategy. With that said, I have to warn you all, while I have been talking up shiv-based strategies for this video, there is a specific boss, I think it's the Time Eater or Time Killer's card, uh, boss, that enemy completely shuts down and counters the shift based strategy. So you need to be careful about going all in on that front. We then have these additional cards as well, but again, these are for more advanced strategies. So with that said, I think we've looked at all the biggies. Again, Twisted Funnel, kind of useful, but it could again be very specific for you. If you're going for an exhaust space one, Strange Spoon can help you out like that. But, I think with that, we'll begin to wrap things up. So again, the Silent is better for longer base battles, thanks to her ability to improve her defense, use zero cost cards, get that engine going, as well as poison, discard, and exhaust base builds, as we've talked about. Her big weakness is that ramping up strategies are great if you can draw all those cards and get going fast. If your deck is too big and you can't draw the cards you need to get going, her individual cards are not strong enough to keep her alive. And Poison again plays into that risk. If it takes you 40 turns to kill an enemy with Poison, guess what, they will probably kill you before you get that far. It's a weakness we see with the defect, which we may come back to in another video. But because the Silent is more focused on improving dexterity or block, rather than strength, you do have to rely on these bonus advantages, or these bonus cards and relics, in order to supplement your damage that way. That's why the uh, Accuracy card, along with Shiv's work, because it gives you free damage without needing to rely on strength, which the Ironclad does. But, with that said, let's wrap it up here. So thank you so much for watching this beginner's guide for the Silent with Slay the Spire. Let me know what you think in the comments below. There are many plays of Slay the Spire here on the channel, and there'll be many more when the game comes out of early access in January. And if there's enough interest, we'll move on and we'll finish up the series with the defect. But, check back for daily discussions on game design here, and on game wisdom, where we stand the art and science of games. Until next time, take care. And now a quick shout out to our supporters over on Patreon.com slash GWBicer. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design, and come back later tonight for our regular streamings. But that's it, and tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games.